and fight! We're back again, another edition of Inside 585. I am your host, Be Easy, Juan HD TV behind the camera. Today we're going to move things in a different direction because there's an issue that the city's been dealing with for far too long. So today's guest, we have a very powerful voice in the community, um, Mr. Davey V. You know, we definitely appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, man. No doubt. So um, just to kind of, for those people who might not be familiar with, with who you are, what exactly is, has been your role? Um, as far as Rochester? As far as, I mean, Rochester, I mean, uh, um, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a video producer, I uh, do some freelance writing, and my main thing, most of my work has centered, for the past at least 10 plus years, has centered on um, exposing the Rochester Police Department and how corrupt and uh, racist and dirty they are. Um, my dad, the late Mario Vara, was a community activist here in Rochester who for years fought hard. Um, against police abuse and to expose the Rochester Police Department and also uh, making a call that, that I find nowadays we're still asking for, which is, for example, um, a civilian review board, you know what I mean, with subpoena power to oversee the police, uh, not so much what we have now and have, and have had for forever, which is basically police policing themselves, which is a joke, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I do. Um, like I said, I've been consistent with it, you know, and uh, I'm proud of my work, you know what I mean? If it, if it sounds like I'm speaking and I'm being kind of cocky about it, um, I am because, uh, you know, I'm a Latino first and foremost. Um, and I, I say that because uh, the Rochester Police Department for years, I mean for decades, um, has done racial profiling. They've abused African-Americans and Latinos. And now it's kind of crossed the whole new section that they are so out of control, like Adam McFadden. Uh, big props to Adam McFadden. You know what I mean? I know him for years, but I never have seen him stand up. Uh, it's about time, Adam, you know what I mean, that, that you stand up like you have at least. He wrote a letter basically saying, and he said it perfect. He said the Rochester Police Department is out of control. And you saw it. I mean, a Caucasian woman, young woman, just got arrested, just had her civil rights violated and trampled on in the United States of America, where we supposedly have a constitution, uh, which I think is pretty much for looks. And it's just hanging on the wall sometimes because, you know, this is a woman who basically had a bully, rogue, thug cop, you know, violate her rights and falsely arrest her, you know what I mean, unlawfully for her videotaping a racial profiling stop. So... That's pretty much what my work has entailed over here in Rochester, you know? Okay, and I'm sure you've obviously uh, experienced a lot, seen a lot. Now, myself as a, as a hip-hop artist and other hip-hop artists, one of the things that, that you might hear in our music is dealing with police corruption from harassment to uh, intimidation and things like that. But it seems like for music, they say we're glorifying what goes on in the streets. But then when you try to take the political route, it falls on deaf ears. So what do you see, what do you feel it's going to take for something really to, to start to change? I mean, I know it can't change overnight, but it just seems like nothing's being heard, whether it's through music or just speaking directly for the people. I'll be honest, man. I, I love that question because um, <clears throat> I'm somebody, like I said, I've, you know, I've, I've done a lot of interviews. I've done local, you know, the Source magazine, I mean, local, national, international level, I'm all over the internet, but never, I really haven't been hit with a question like that, with an opportunity to answer uh, what, what some may agree with and some don't, but as a true hip-hop fan that, that, that grew up with the music that was there from the inception of hip-hop, back when, uh, you know, Sugar Hill Gang, you know what I mean, Rapper's Delight, I mean, uh, uh, as a true hip-hop fan, I'm disappointed with hip hop, man. I really am. So I'm glad you asked me that question because um, hip hop at one point, to be honest with you, um, and I'm and I'm more remembering now as I'm speaking, like a group like Public Enemy, such a strong group yeah. that really at one point <clears throat> hip hop had the opportunity, and I know I say past tense had because I think really hip hop has gone downhill, man. Mainstream hip hop. And uh, we need something refreshing. Like Public <clears throat> Enemy was the was the um, you know the the group that called for social change. That was that that voice in the hood and coming from the hood 
that reached out to white America, that reached out to a lot of white teens, that inter introduced hip hop to a uh, middle class and upper class families through their kids. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it was a, such a powerful voice, man. And if you think about it, I mean, nowadays hip hop at least has become so much about, you know, misogyny, about flashy, about drugs, about cars. And it's almost like, like hip hop has taken so much of a turn from what it from the road that it used to be on and that road that it that it was on it, it it had so much potential to to make changes in society changes that you know even though it's maybe a drop or a step at a time could have had the effect and chipped away and made changes like we need like changes having to do with the system changes that that you know like these cops that are out of control i'll be honest with you it's 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 the cops like mario Masic, you know what i mean who arrested emily good but it's not the cops, you know what I mean? It's kind of like it is, but it isn't. If me and you work for a company, I say this every time I'm interviewed, we get in trouble, okay, with an organization or a company, we're going to be dealt with. So it's not even about the cops on the street. It's bigger than them. In other words, it's implemented in the training. It's implemented on the orders they get every morning on roll call to basically go out there, kick ass, take names later. You know what I'm saying? So it's a mentality that, that's permeated in the, in the culture and the society of the police officer. And changes like that need to be tackled, you know. And and, and I'm I, like I said, I'm disappointed with hip hop in many ways because at one point it could it could have had this so much power and so much influence, and it seems like 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 it basically in many ways has sold itself out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and you know it's 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 sad, bro. It really is. Kind of like that that N.W.A. song, the, the fuck the police. Oh man, I mean you at know? that point to me, <laughs> yeah. yeah. At that point to me, hip hop was like you know. At, at, at a peak were, were really, you know what I mean, uh, uh, and obviously, you know, great example that you brought up because that song right there, I mean, you had uh, the FBI all over it. You had uh, the politicians all over it, you know what I mean? So, so that right there, whenever you have an ear, you know what I mean, of, of the feds, is because they're not so much worried about the words, fuck the police. They're worried about the message that that's sending. And it's almost like they don't want people waking up. They don't want people to hear about all these things that are happening. Like back then, NWA was reporting from a lot of stuff happening, you know, on the West Coast. You know what I mean? Compton, L.A., you know what I'm saying? And, um, and, and so the perfect example right there. You know, the, the voice of hip-hop and the strength of it, I think it's just become diluted. It all seems like it's about the same thing. Whenever I hear a new rapper, you know... Uh, rapping and it's not like they got to be rapping about you know fuck the police necessarily, but anything that's that's even semi new, or 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 you know not rapping about the same old same old you know what I'm saying the you know to use hip hop terms now you know rapping about the bitches rapping about the money rapping about the ice and the cars and the rims and it's crazy because that's what kids growing up are seeing, and let alone we you know but but at the same time we step out the house or the average kid stepped out the house. He's seeing, you know, Johnny, law enforcement officer, you know, violating someone, someone's rights. You know what I'm saying? He's seeing the news where a cop is himself breaking the law and trampling on people's rights. So it's like one fit, one thing doesn't fit the other. You know what I mean? It's, I think it's time for hip hop to go back to the force that 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 it stopped being. You know what I mean? And, and that was just the voice <clears throat> calling for for a change. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. reporting on 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 real shit that's happening, you know what I mean? Not so much the guns and the, you know, bang, bang, and the money and the drugs, you know what I mean? Just, you know, some real shit, man. There's, there's real shit going on here as we speak. As we speak, there's people being racially profiled right now on Clinton, on Clifford, on Joseph, as we're doing this. I mean, this is real. The, like I said, the Emily Good thing is nothing new, you know what I mean? It just has catapulted it to a worldwide audience thanks to video sites like YouTube. You know what I'm saying? But it's nothing new. You know what I mean? We just, we need to wake up, man, you know? We really do. And just so there's, I think, like, and also with that kind of subject, the biggest misunderstanding is you don't hate police. You just, right now, you hate what they're representing right now. Right. I mean, a lot of people that would, that would, that would listen to you or have seen, um, other events that you spoke on were saying, oh, man, he just he just hates cops. Right. He just hates all cops. But right. that's not the case. Just like with NWA, they weren't really saying, fuck the police. Right. Like, all of you, it's right. just so many. It's like, you know, that one bad apple spoils a bunch. There's a lot of bad apples. Absolutely. I mean, and that used to be the saying, oh, there's one bad apple. 
Whatever we said about the police, and I want to be clear, we need the police. I mean, of, of course that society needs police. What society does not need is these corrupt drug cops that are abusing people, that are taking, that are doing a racial profile, that are taking the laws into their own hands, and not even taking the law. They're almost making the law as they as they go about, you know what I mean, as they, as they go on their daily job. And my thing here is, like, with Chief Shepard and Mayor Richards, you know what I mean, you got these top brass officials okay, that are basically running the police department. And in the RPD's uh, um, case, it's about a, a, a department, give or take, about 700 officers, okay, a little bit more than that, I believe. Um, and, and you basically got these officials that are, are by their very actions, are supporting, okay, their actions. You know what I mean? We, we need a clear defining message sent out to these officers um, that these actions will not be tolerated. Because the way I look at it, it's not that I hate the police or I don't, um, it's the fact that if I see that this is going on and it's been going on for decades and then I see a cocky interview that James Shepard did on the local newspaper, which I won't mention the name, where he said we don't need a civilian review board and we're doing just fine policing ourselves, but then I see what these cops are doing, then I see the, the tons of emails that I'm getting and the calls that I'm getting because people are like, Davey, this happened to me, or another guy is sharing a story. In other words, then there's a problem. When I see a city councilman that's denouncing these actions and saying eight years ago, Adam McFadden said in his letter, he held a meeting telling the officials at that, at that point that the RPD was out of control, and here we are eight years later and really nothing has changed. They haven't met, they haven't met their quotas, you know what I mean, mandated by the state uh, and by the government of hiring more minority law enforcement officers, you know. So in, in that in that sense right there, even just that technical sense, the RPD is in violation of a quota, which is to attract more minority officers on, on force. Which, why, why is that important? It's important because um, when you have people such as Mario Mastic, he lives in Leroy. I'm sorry, when you have officers, okay, that don't know anything about the, the, the phrase cultural uh, sensitivity, and any cultural training, you got these officers, and I've heard officers discuss this, okay, where basically they feel like they're put in a war zone. And, and, and police officers in Rochester have used this term to describe neighborhoods like Joseph and Clinton and Clifford. Already you're coming into a mentality of dealing with minorities, dealing with African Americans and Latinos, like they are necessarily the enemy, okay? And that, that, that poisons the well for any kind of uh, a positive interaction, which is what the RPD has claimed for years that they want. They, be they want better community relations. How are you going to have better community relations when you have Caucasian officers that are growing up in mostly, okay, uh, uh, white towns such as Leroy? You got officers coming up from Bath that are working in Rochester. You got officers that don't even live in the city and really are not used to uh, dealing with minorities. But all of a sudden, you're giving these, these officers the power to pull an individual over, to search their car. And it's not just the Rochester Police Department. I want to make that clear. There's departments like Aronicoy Police Department. There's departments like Greece Police Department, which finally, after many years, are trying to clean up their image. But guess what? I'm still getting calls saying from people that are still being abused and harassed and violated and stretched out in the middle of West Ridge Road, and their cars are being searched. So again, it's not about hating the police or liking them. It's about they are there to do a job. We pay their salaries. We, through our tax dollars, pay them to do a job. And when the police is turning on citizens like they have and like they continue to do, then we have a serious problem. Do we need the police? Absolutely. Do we need the police like Mario Massick, like the officers that retaliated against me, myself, and other supporters that were holding a peaceful uh, uh, indoor meeting to support this woman? And then you saw me. Even that right there. I never want to hear any parent in this community, okay? Unless, like we say in Spanish, uh, uh, I'm Cuban and, I, and we use the word a lot, unless they have the cojones, okay, to stand up and to do stuff like I have done, okay, and expose the police and speak out on what we need instead of being in your homes complacent because it hasn't hit your family, so you'd rather look the other way and say, hey, you know what? It doesn't involve me. I'm going to look the other way. No, it does involve you. Our tax dollars are going where our children, okay, in the city schools, there's being programs such as art classes that are being cut. There's programs as essential as physical education and gym class that are being cut, okay? But at the same time, where's the money going? I'll tell you where it's going.